wet and wild. That's just one way of describing a watery invention marking its 50th birthday. Luke Burbank has floated out to find its creator. Charlie Hall loves the water. He lives right on it in a beautiful home on Bainbridge Island, Washington. And as an inventor, over the years, he's come up with all kinds of ways to utilize water. From camping showers to inflatable kayaks. But it was his very first water-related invention that changed America forever. Is this the first time you've done an interview like this? Yes. <laughs> How weird would it be if it wasn't? <laughs> what am I supposed to be feeling right now as I am lying on this, this waterbed? Oh, well, feel the small of your back, first of all. Uh, this mattress cradles you. Plus, you probably feel some very comfortable amount of warmth, and that helps your muscles expand and relax. That's right. Charlie Hall invented the waterbed 50 years ago this year. How old were you when you were working on this? 22 or 3, I guess. Do you ever invite anyone back to the studio to test this thing out? Yes, yes, actually. We got married later, so. <laughs> in San Francisco, way back in 1968, Hall was studying industrial design and his groovy idea for his senior thesis was something he called the pleasure pit. You could have friends over lounging in like a sofa and read the paper, and that was a lot of water. It was eight feet square. Hall refined the idea, eventually patenting the waterbed, which he started selling up and down the West Coast. Did you know that it was an inherently sexy product? Yes, I think so. And because I, it just watching people's reactions, they kind of got the sexy part of it. Actually, undeniable, because we delivered one to a nudist colony, and they calls us up a couple weeks later, so we've got to have another one. People love it. <laughs> so. To hear Hall tell it, it was the first substantial reimagining of a mattress in at least 100 years. Beds long ago were like indentations in the floor of the cave. You put straw in there, you put leaves in there, and if you're a good hunter, you put in a skin or a pelt. And then in the Middle Ages, they moved up into something off the floor, wood rack frame around, uh, and ropes underneath, tying it together. But that's the way the bedding business was until like 1800s, coil springs came around, and that was a big innovation. Coil springs were big until, until water beds came along. Despite this, it actually took a while to convince the wider public to sleep on a bag of water. And it took even longer to convince the mattress industry. The mattress companies that we competed with, the Sealy and Simmons, and those folks pretty much um, disregarded us to start with. Keith Koenig started selling the beds in the 1970s with his brother at their store called Waterbed City in South Florida. And he says when people eventually fell for the beds, they fell hard. At one time, we were the largest seller of beds in South Florida, and we just sold water beds. When you sleep better, it's written all over your face. In fact, by the 1980s, more than one in five of all beds sold were water beds. Just get on it. Whoa, oh gosh, <laughs> this is really, I feel like I'm at an amusement park. And the biggest fan of the water bed? Well, that might be Katherine Johnson of Mesa, Arizona. What's the longest you've been away from your water bed in the last 30 years? Two weeks. And that's when I go back east to Pittsburgh. And I lay in bed with my granddaughters and we talk about the water bed. <laughs> and how we wish we were on the water bed. <laughs> Would you say that it's one of the more notable things about your mom is just how much she loves that waterbed? It is. It is. Everybody knows it about her. Everybody in the family also loves the waterbed. She slept on the waterbed with three other teenage girls. Uh, all of them. We were all like, and two cats. And two cats. <laughs> Despite the Johnson family's enthusiasm, Waterbed sales have tanked since their high point in the 80s. If you've ever dreamed of owning a waterbed, now's the time. Our prices are low enough as it is. 
And that's something Charlie Hall and his business partner, Keith Koenig, are hoping to change with their noticeably less jiggly version of the waterbed called a float. Oh, and it actually looks like a normal bed, too. Charlie Hall let me try one out in one of his bedrooms. I've been fighting the urge this entire interview not to doze off, which I guess is a, a kind of a rave review for this uh, waterbed. Yeah. Yeah. Hall's new and improved mattress had its grand debut this year at Koenig's store, which is now called City Furniture in Florida. I used to have one years ago. And while it's still unclear if Americans are ready to fall back in love with the waterbed, for those considering it, waterbed enthusiast Katherine Johnson has a message. What would you say they're missing out on, someone who's never been on a waterbed? Besides a good night's sleep, just fun. It's almost like being a little kid again. It's just such a good feeling. I think there would be a lot happier couples, a whole lot less aches and pains. It's a religious experience. 